We're all emotional beings, some of us more than others. So why is it that when we're faced with certain controversial topics or people, some of us feel so strongly toward that person, while others merely pass it off as if it's nothing, continuing on with their life? Before we explore how our brains experience emotions into greater detail, please hit that subscribe button to help us create more content on brain and behavior, giving you the knowledge to mine the gold in mind. So, while we may use words, feelings, and emotions interchangeably, the two are rather different. What is actually going between emotions and feelings is a bit more complicated than what we know. For one, emotions are a series of complex programs of action. As a general purpose, we have emotion as a survival mechanism to seize an opportunity or avoid potential dangers that come our way. We use the word programs of action as they have been set into our DNA, inherently a part of who we are since centuries ago. For this reason, no matter the person, the emotions that we all feel are similar in how they are processed. While there might be slightly differences in how they are expressed based on the person, in essence, they remain the same across every race, culture, and country. Feelings, on the other hand, are nothing more than the display or portrayal of those aforementioned processes when giving emotion. Simply having emotion does not mean you feel it. Feeling an emotion is the process of perceiving what is actually going on within during those throes of emotion. So now that we know the difference between emotion and feeling, where exactly are the structures that make up emotion in our brain? The limbic system, a group of interconnected structures, exists deep in the recesses of our brain. Responsible for emotional response, these can be broken into four parts that are crucial to understanding emotion. These four parts are the hypothalamus, the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the thalamus. The hypothalamus is part of the brain that deals with the stress of hormones, our sexual responses such as arousal, and helps in regulating body temperature. The amygdala, this bean-sized part of the brain, is crucial in our emotions, largely involved in dealing with fear, anger, and motivation. This is where the fight and flight response really largely takes place. The hippocampus is a lower part of the limbic system playing a huge role in memory retrieval and learning. We understand the spatial environment around us through this and is quite vulnerable to being damaged by different stimuli. And finally, the thalamus serves as the main relay station for the brain. This part takes charge with motor and sensory signals and acts as almost a communication hub for the brain. In his book, Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ, psychologist Daniel Goleman explored the emotional brain deeper using the term amygdala hijack to describe an emotional response that happens when our brain overrides the logical side due to high levels of perceived potential threat. We experience this amygdala hijack when we have high levels of stress thrown at us suddenly. Our brain releases two kinds of hormones known as cortisol and adrenaline, and in this moment, our brain goes into fight or flight mode. When we experience this, we are unable to think clearly or rationally as our heart races, palms sweat, and we begin to tense up. It is during these moments we say or do things that we may later regret, making irrational decisions that we pay for down later down the road. The world is a makeup of multiple stimuli and responses. Everything we do from how we may navigate our lives to decisions we make is nothing more than a myriad of responses to the world at large. In the end, emotions are triggered when the stakes involved in what we do or have been quite high, either positively or negatively. This is rooted in our biology since ancient times when we are constantly and continuously faced with potential threats, whether that be danger from wild creatures, unpredictable weather, environmental changes, mysterious diseases, etc. Emotions ultimately served as an evolutionary mechanism to ensure that we are to react accordingly to a given situation, a sort of automated response to engage us to either embrace the issue or run away from it. By and large, having emotions is useful evolutionary programming that is meant to help us navigate the world better. But there's no denying that the world today is completely different from the one centuries ago when we were hunted by wild, unpredictable animals. We're faced with more distractions and decisions every single day now. As such, there's more stimulus and influences trying to stir an emotional response out of us on a daily basis. So much so that it's more important than ever before to consciously be aware of how emotions can make up our irrationality. We are smarter and more self-sufficient than the ancestors of our ancient past. We as humans have evolved far more than other species on this planet. Our ability to feel or process the emotions and store those feelings of emotions in memory as a way to predict 
outcomes of the future is one of the biggest differentiating factors between us and many other creatures. Our ability to think our way through these feelings is what allows us to do and be as great as we can be. For this reason, in a time where everyone seems to be emotionally sensitive and influential programming is everywhere, from our phones, TVs, and more, it's crucial for us to not only learn about how we feel emotion or how things like the amygdala hijack may change us, but leverage this understanding about emotion to seize control and ultimately make smarter decisions. As a popular quote once said, you cannot control everything that happens to you, but you can only control the way you respond to what happens. The brain is always a tricky thing to understand, but the more steps we take to do so, the better we can get at making the decisions around us. Watch the video on the left to learn how understanding more about your brain will help with decision making, and subscribe to the channel to mine the gold in mind.